Israel has a fascism problem. It is hurting not just the thousands of Palestinians killed, wounded, or displaced under the occupation, but also the Jewish people Israel claims to be protecting. Zionism is built upon the idea of a Jewish homeland. But in that Jewish homeland, not all Jews are equal. The founders of Zionism, like Theodor Herzl, and Israel's early state builders were all Ashkenazi Jews. Ashkenazim are white European Jews hailing from Eastern and Central Europe and the former Russian Empire. Herzl wrote a famous novel. Theodor Herzl's famous book Alt Neuland, or Old New Land, which envisioned the modern state of Israel years before its creation. The book also talked about Israel as small Europe in the Middle East. But not all Jews are Ashkenazim, and not all Ashkenazim are Zionists. All the rabbis around the world for 130 years since Zionism started spoke up in every way, in every style that they had, and declared that Zionism is sinful, is, uh, is a criminal, and is totally unacceptable according to my religion. That's Rabbi Yisrael Dovid Weiss. He is one of the many anti-Zionist Jews around the world. In fact, prior to the Holocaust and the founding of the State of Israel, Zionism was a fringe minority movement among the world's Jewry. In the aftermath of the Holocaust, as survivors and Zionists started to emigrate to Palestine, there was an immense need for manpower to build and populate this new formation. In 1911, David Ben-Gurion, who would later become Israel's first prime minister, went on record saying, we need people who are born workers. We have to pay attention to the local element, the Oriental Jews, both the Yemenite and Sephardic. Their standard of living and their needs are lower. So to get builders and soldiers and not be overwhelmed demographically by Palestinians, the Zionist project was an urgent need of Jewish immigration. According to Professor Aziza Kazum, European colonialists would often treat local minorities and Muslim lands, like Jews and Armenians, as allies and reward them for their cooperation against local authorities. This led to increased tensions between communities. Moreover, the creation of Israel by way of a mass ethnic cleansing and displacement of 750,000 Palestinians increased tensions that already existed. All these tensions led some Arab Jews to migrate, but the number of Jews relocating to Israel wasn't enough for the Zionist Ashkenazi state builders. To accelerate the process, Zionist spies planted bombs in Jewish centers in Iraq to create hysteria and panic in order to hasten Jewish Iraqis to flee Iraq and emigrate to Israel. Israeli Jewish historian Avi Shlaim, whose family emigrated to Israel from Iraq when he was five, told Middle East Eye. It was part of what somebody described as cruel Zionism. And this was particularly cruel because it involved innocent Jews, decent Jews, good people. And uh, the Zionist movement or the intelligence officers turned these Jews in Baghdad and then later in Cairo. Uh, they turned them into terrorists. They turned them into spies and terrorists against their own homeland. Over the decades, a combination of push and pull factors eventually led many Mizrahi and Sephardic Jews to emigrate to the state of Israel. But they were less than welcomed. The Jewish community in Iraq had very little to do with Zionism. Uh, Zionism was a movement by European Jews for European Jews. Um, and my mother used to um, talk a great deal about the wonderful Muslim friends that we had in Baghdad. And one day I asked her, did we have any Zionist friends? And she said, uh, no, um, Zionism is an Ashkenazi thing. It's nothing to do with us. And I think that reflected the predominant view of Iraqi uh, Jews. And a white savior story was constructed about how Middle Eastern Jews were saved from savage Muslims as well as the savagery within themselves. The discrimination against non-white Jews is a well-documented phenomenon in many sectors of life in Israel. 
including in education, reproductive rights, the military, and others. One of these shocking stories was accusations against the Israeli government of eugenic practices. Families claimed that officials had coerced Ethiopian Jewish women to take contraceptive drugs with long-lasting effects. Critics said it could explain the almost 50% decline over the past 10 years in the birth rate of Israel's Ethiopian community. Ethiopians were not alone in their grievances. The Israeli government is accused of separating Yemenite Jews from their children when the families immigrated to Israel decades ago. The officials told parents their children had died, but did not provide any evidence or the bodies of the deceased. Journalists and the families of the victims later discovered that in some cases, the children had been experimented upon in hospitals, while alive as well as after they died, in violation of Jewish tradition, and some others had been given up for adoption or even sold to white Ashkenazi Holocaust survivors. Many non-white Jewish communities from Iraq, Yemen, Ethiopia, and other places around the world have long been a victim of the Zionist racial hierarchy. Israeli academic of Iraqi origin Ella Shabbat writes, I am not asking Palestinians to feel sorry for the Sephardi soldiers who might be among those shooting at them. What is at stake in any case is not a competition for sympathy, but a search for alternative. These words written in 1988 are still relevant today. What do you think? Is Zionism a white supremacist project?